Could you please get staff and support? Staff and support, please introduce yourself. Officer Karen I. All right, thank you all. All right, ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. I'm Christopher Wilcox. DOC number is uh, 763380. All right, Chris, you heard the introductions. We're having a parole interview. Ask some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. Do you understand the process? Yes, sir. And we have uh, Miss Dolly. Uh, Bobbin will be here. She'll be speaking, and we'll have Michaela Wilcox, whose sister, will be speaking at the appropriate time. Christopher Wilcox, DOC number 763380. You are a first class offender for us, Billy date 10 22 2021, not eligible for good time, full term date 10 23 2025, six year sentence, and indecent behavior with the juvenile. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right, would you answer Ms. Wise's question? Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good as can be. Good answer. That's a good answer. How old are you for the record? 20. And how long have you been in jail? Three years. Uh, so you got arrested 10, 26, and 19, and you've been in jail since then? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Okay, good, good. Um, let me read uh, something that was sent in about your case. We asked the law enforcement community to give us your opinion about the terms of lease, and I want you to hear what they said. They are opposed because of the horrific facts of the case. Uh, they believe that you are a continuing danger to the community, particularly vulnerable children. Considering his young age, and the significant limit of time over which he committed this crime, I believe he is highly likely to reoffend. Uh, we, we respectfully uh, state that, uh, that anything less than you serving your entire series would, uh, would not be, would, it would de depreciate the heinous nature of your crime and your predator, predatory behavior. We oppose. What do you say to that? I don't really know what to say. No, right? It's hard, isn't it? No. That's hard. That's in the record. This that's uh there was there was sent to me to us of all the law enforcement is opposed to your early release. I just want to state that for the record. Have you admitted uh, to your mother what you repeat that? Have you admitted to your mother what you did to your sister? But I believe we have talked about that. Oh, yes or no? Yes or no? Uh, yes. You have admitted to your mother that your sister's statements are true. And your statements have been false. Oh. Oh, no. no. Yeah. No. I didn't think so. I just wanted, I just asked. I just, I was curious about that. Have you had the opportunity to take the sex offender treatment program? Which program? Sex offender treatment. They don't have it uh, here. Okay. What programs have you had? Uh, I took a, a, a anger management class. Okay. That's about all I oh, get it at the time. Yes, I understand. I understand. I understand. Um, you said in your statement that uh, that you are bettering yourself. How are you bettering yourself? I've been get, trying to get as many classes as I can. I've been trying to work, but when, when the charge that I have, they, they won't let me work, so. But. Uh, is there any uh, any books that your family can send you that might help you? You can ask them to send you some books that you can, you know, you can some 
you know, to uh, to bury yourself. Just a suggestion, that's all. I, I got some books here that I uh, read. Did you finish high school? No, ma'am. And I think there's some books to help you prepare for that high set. That's something even if they don't offer it, you know, maybe your mother can send you something you can start working on that, uh, work for your high set. Well, that's all I had, Chairman. Thank you for answering my question. All right. Uh, we'll hear from Miss Dolly. Yes, sir. And next day. Um, I don't know how to. I'm I'm new at the Zoom thing. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead and make a mistake. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm his mother, and I don't believe that he's uh, he's only done something one time. Um, and they're saying that they don't want him to get out, but. We're doing everything we can to support him out here. He'll have to sleep. He has a job. He has a place to live. And he has family support. All of us are supporting him getting help. Even his sister, that him and, had, him and her had this issue. She lives in West Texas now. I believe that he'd be doing better out here than in there. He can actually get help. He can actually get his high school diploma and have a job and have a life. He turned, he was 17 when this happened. He's, he's only 20. I just want him to be able to have a life. And I believe that we can help him do that better than him being stuck in there. This has been extremely hard on our family. And I would like for my son to be able to come home. Please. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we're here from uh, Michaela. No, yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm his oldest sister out of the three of us. And I've talked to my younger sister and talked to all of the other family members who were involved, whether it been emotionally or, you know, were there whenever everything happened. And we're all on the same page. We all just want him to come home because like, like my mom said, he's been there since he was 17. He didn't finish high school. He didn't, you know, get to get his high school diploma or walk across the stage for graduation. And I, I honestly believe that he shouldn't have to serve all of the extra time whenever the person who made the statement originally took it back and changed their story several times and has even told me personally that she would rather him just get out and get the help that he needs rather than sit in there and be pushed back and around by the system that isn't getting him the help that he needs because he can't get in the classes he needs to be in because of COVID and all the other issues where he's at. And he has right. my full support and everything, so. Okay, thank you so much for your comment. All right, Christopher, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Uh, me personally, I would, I would love to get out. I just, you know, be approved, pro, just so I can, you know, be able to work and get the high set. So I feel like I accomplished something. So I just wasting my life. Okay. All right. Thank you. I was found prepared to vote, Miss uh, Miss Y. Yes, sir. Uh, and you are a young man, and uh, and and there will come a day when you can put this behind you, uh, and, and and you can't. But today, my vote is denied because of the lack of the sex offender treatment uh, and the law enforcement opposition. Uh, I I just suggest that you write a request to get moved to a facility that offers that program. And you do have a full term date of 2025. So that's that. Best wishes to you, sir. Mr. Uh, Rocha. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilcox, you're in a real bad situation. Uh, you can't get programming. But I would be remiss in doing my job if I would reduce you without the necessary programming that you need. 
you have a moderate risk assessment telling me that you have a moderate chance of reoffending without that program. So I'm going to have to deny your request today. I you have two votes to deny. I'm also going to vote to deny your request for, uh, your request for the same reason. Three votes to deny today. Your parole has been denied. Good luck to you. So we can zoom in on on our hero over here. He he looks like he has no soul. I had to listen to this twice uh, because you know if you don't catch the beginning, you can kind of. I'm like he was 17. It was, um, it, you know, the case was called like indecent. What was it? Um, with the minor, and he's now 20, and they're giving him more time. So I, I really had to listen to it a second time. And so, you know, I, I tried finding the details on this. I couldn't. If anyone can find it, please do share. But this is um, this this guy is scary. <laughs> He is one scary, he's got problems and it's scary to think that he even will get out one day because um, frankly, I feel like I'm looking at a monster. He, it, what they hinted to is, was abusing a young boy for a long length of time and he then abuses his younger sister. These are the only two things that he was caught for. You know, it's like a look into um, enablers too of the dysfunction, how his mother and then his sister has the audacity to come on and, and, and you, you see the younger sister's not there and they're saying, and she's actually saying that her younger sister changed her story a few times. Oh, my poor brother Christopher, he couldn't walk down the aisle and get his diploma. And my younger sister, she she changed her story a few times, and it's not fair. And she said herself, "This is a look into how it happens." It's just disgust. It's just disgust me. And he he will get out in a few years, and, and he he is going to be released into society, released into a world where he will destroy more lives. That is terrifying. You know, we see on this channel other predators at much at much older age. And we've seen them in their 80s. And it seems that something that they have in common is that they just don't understand what they don't believe they've done anything wrong. They're, they're, they have a mental defect. They have a, a real serious disease. He has the hallmarks of, of everything super dangerous. The idea that he's molesting his own sister, young boys, oh, he doesn't care. Like there's something, there's something seriously wrong. And then on top of it, to have his mother and sister enabling him and blaming the system, listen to the words that they said, blaming their own daughter and sister, putting it on the system on COVID while he didn't get help. I 
this is a recipe for so much pain and suffering to be brought into the future when he gets out. And it's just terrifying. How do you stop a monster like this? And I don't know what the answer is. You can't keep someone locked up forever as much as we want to. And it was And frankly, him being in these classes, I just don't believe, especially with the fact that he's being enabled and things are being downplayed by his own immediate family, that he that that there's going to be any type of result. This is something that you need a lifetime of 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 therapy because he 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 he's you know and even then. Um, it's like, <laughs> I don't even know how I feel about that statement. I just feel like we're looking at a really scary dude put in, in the situation he's in that makes it even scarier. Um, yeah, you know, it's just my perspective after seeing it twice. Love to hear your thoughts on this and um, I'll see you later.